Hi, I'm Dr. John LaPook. Uh, I'm in the main government square here in Recife, which is the epicenter of the outbreak of uh, Zika in Brazil. And this is the, the place where there's the largest number of cases of microcephaly uh, that have been reported, about 300. Um, so we have a bunch of questions. I'll get right to it. The first one is from James Ayers, who says, how concerned should we be about people returning from Carnival in Rio? So this gets to the issue of how is the virus transmitted. The vast majority of cases, it's transmitted by a mosquito. Uh, uh, Aedes aegypti, um, the virus is inside the mosquito, the mosquito bites somebody and then transmits the virus. Now, here's what can happen. A person, say, gets infected in Brazil. That person then travels to the United States. The virus is in the bloodstream. The CDC says for about a week, there's a report I saw that it's in there, it can be measured, the genetic material can be measured by something called PCR uh, at day 11. So let's say it's, it's somewhere in that range, seven to 11 days, maybe a little bit more, or maybe a little bit less in any one particular person. So when the person comes to the United States, they could still have the virus in their bloodstream. Uh, and this is such a difference from in the old days when we took a freighter that took two weeks, the illness would be gone, it might be out of your bloodstream. But now we FedEx ourselves home, sometimes same day delivery. And so now the person could be in the United States with the virus in their bloodstream. Now, a mosquito here during mosquito season could bite that infected person. An uninfected mosquito would then pick up the Zika virus from the infected person. That then infected mosquito could turn around and bite an uninfected person and now you would have local transmission of Zika by a virus, by a, by a mosquito that is in the United States. Now, that hasn't been shown to happen yet, but um, there's a lot of fears about what could possibly happen. Uh, most experts I've spoken to think it's inevitable or almost inevitable. That, that, believe it or not, was a mosquito. I kid you not, even though I have mosquito spray uh, all on me, and it just shows you that uh, you can do everything you want, um, but you're not 100% sure of stopping it. Um, in any case, experts say that uh, it's likely that this will come to the United States at first in the South, maybe in South Florida, in the Gulf Coast, or in Texas, um, uh, but that we're protected in the United States because there's a true winter, we have screens, we have air conditioning, uh, and uh, the conditions here are in general better than in Brazil. Sexually transmitted um, Zika reported in the United States, so that is a route that people are now considering. Uh, and uh, experts are also looking at the possibility that it could potentially hit the blood supply from people who feel well but have the Zika infection and donate blood. So there are a lot of questions, and that's going to be the theme here, a lot of questions. We have a next one, which is um, once you have it from Alan Thorpe, once you have Zika, do you always have it and can never have babies without small heads? All right, this is the theme of a lot of questions that we've been asked, uh, and it goes to the question of how long the active virus is in your bloodstream. And again, there are a lot, I'm sorry to keep saying this, there are a lot of questions that are unknown, but um, it's reasonable to think, uh, and I confirmed this with Dr. Anthony Fauci, who's the head of infectious diseases for the NIH, who I asked this very specific question of. Um, it's, it's reasonable to think that once you develop immunity, so get antibodies, for example, to it, after the acute infection, uh, that once that immunity is in place and you're feeling well, that, uh, that it shouldn't be a risk, say, years later to get pregnant to your fetus. Uh, this has been asked by a, a lot of different questions. Again, lots is, lots is not, a lot of information is not known, but uh, that's what we know for now. Uh, we have another question. Um, Sarah M., if it comes to America, what can we do? Um, well, the first thing is, I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't discount the fears. That's the first thing. Um, of course, you don't want to panic, but I don't discount the fears. If you're a pregnant woman, the statistics don't matter to you. It doesn't matter if it's one in a million, one in a thousand. You have that evolutionarily wired protective mode, and, and I totally understand it. I have two sons, and I know exactly what that feels like. But um, just know the facts. The facts are that, for the most part, it's transmitted by mosquitoes. The United States, the experts think it could spread here, but it shouldn't be widespread kind of outbreak that you're seeing in Brazil, for example, where there's 1.5 million cases, it looks like, and maybe even growing. Uh, you can use air conditioning. You can use... Uh, repellent, um, bug repellent, bug spray, um, and screens. Uh, so that's the best thing you can do. And of course, if somebody is returning from one of these countries and could potentially be infected, then 
after today's report of a possible sexual transmission, I think it's reasonable to stay away from that person uh, until they're declared absolutely positively cleared of any kind of active viral infection in terms of having any kind of sexual intercourse or any sexual relations. Um, do you have any information about anyone developing a vaccine? Yes. Again, Dr. Anthony Fauci from the uh, NIH said that they expect a phase one trial, that's the first aspect of a trial, to come into effect uh, to start by the end of this year. But he said it's going to take probably several years. He, he thought two, three, five years before a vaccine is widely available. Um, and sort of ironically, if that's the right word, the more people that get infected, the quicker a vaccine will come. With Ebola, by the time they had a vaccine, there weren't as many people to test it on, so it was harder to know if it was effective. Is it just dangerous? for pregnant women or should we all be concerned? That's Courtney King. And um, again, this is a, a something that's in progress. There has been this condition called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is neurological syndrome, uh, which can include some paralysis, paralysis of the lower extremities and other neurological problems that can happen with the Zika virus. Right now, it's felt to be a, it's been described as a very mild type of illness where you have uh, some aches and pains, joint pains, fever, rash, conjunctivitis, that's kind of red eye, uh, and it should be over, you know, within a week or so in most people. Now, 80% of people have no symptoms, and that's one of the things that makes this so hard, uh, because if you've been in one of these countries, you come back and you want to know, well, was I infected? And there is a test it's called a PCR that can tell if you have active virus in your bloodstream, but the test that can see if you have antibodies to see if you were infected in the past that's not as accurate, and one reason it's not as accurate and not widely, not as widely available is because there's cross-reactivity, there's confusion uh, in the test, and it can give you a false positive if you were previously infected with dengue fever or yellow fever or if you had a, or if you had a yellow fever vaccine. So it's not a perfect vaccine. Uh, it's not a perfect uh, blood test yet, and there's a lot of work going on about that. Um, any other questions here? Is there any evidence the Zika virus is carried in mosquitoes in the U.S.? That's Doris Correa. Uh, not yet, but again, don't be, you know, I want to kind of immunize people a little bit emotionally against what I think is the near certainty that it will be found eventually in mosquitoes in the United States. But that is not the end of the world. It just means, okay, it's here. We have to, a lot of work to do. We have to figure out um, maybe innovative ways of attacking it that you've heard perhaps of uh, these genetically modified male mosquitoes that have, they pass on a gene to the larvae that makes them die before they come to, to uh, adulthood. So um, there's other there's vaccines that are in development. People are trying to um, uh, go out and make sure that mosquito breeding grounds are eradicated. That's what's happening right here in Brazil. I was in Recife with health officials and soldiers from 30 soldiers from the government. Uh, we're going around house to house and identifying places where mosquitoes could possibly be growing and also educating people. So public education is very important. Um, there's another one. Uh, is there likely an age that a pregnancy is more likely to be affected from Tina Baker Hill? Again, we're not sure exactly, but in general, there's a lot of growth that's happening in the first trimester, especially neurologically. So one would think logically that could be a time uh, when it could be passed. There was another question I saw from somebody who asked if it can be transmitted in breast milk. I don't know the answer to that. I haven't seen anything about that, but again, that's something that people are going to look at. Are babies at risk for developmental issues if they become infected? Yes, based on other experience with microcephaly, they can have uh, issues with development. And, um, and there, you know, I spoke again to the, um, to the health commissioner of Recife this, in Brazil. He said these babies are going to need a lot of social services, a lot of follow. We're going to have to figure out is maybe it's not just microcephaly. Maybe there are other developmental problems that are not as obvious. So anybody who has any evidence of Zika exposure, uh, uh, in utero, and so now that the mother had evidence, you're going to want to follow these people very closely. Um, we're coming to the end of the time. I just want to end with one sort of philosophical thought, which is there are a lot of statistics that have been thrown around here. So you heard 1.5 million Brazil uh, people, people in Brazil may have been infected by the Zika virus. And you heard uh, me say earlier there were 300 babies with microcephaly here in this one district of Brazil. and. Um, thousands of babies with microcephaly in Brazil. But all those numbers, I know it's kind of hard to process, isn't it? Uh, but I went to this main hospital in Recife uh, and saw a woman and a 
her and uh, I saw a couple whose baby has microcephaly. And when you when you look at the actual people involved and you speak to them, which I did, and I spoke to her about the stigma, she's so worried. She's going to love this baby no matter what she said, but she's worried about other, what other people, what society will think. Um, when you look in their eyes and when you look in the eyes of the baby, uh, it takes your breath away.